Here's something you don't see every day. It's a 1920 LaCrosse Model M. Keith Coolangle gets lots of questions whenever he rolls out this odd-looking tractor. Well, they want to know, is it a grasshopper? Is it really a tractor? Where do you sit on it? I mean, it's, these are all the questions I get. Then you have to explain that it was meant for the farmer to ride his implement, like a plow, a mower, a wagon. And then they sort of get that understanding, and then when you run it and show them, it's, it is kind of fun. It's not something you see in this day and age. Known as a line drive or rain drive, this rare tractor was manufactured by the LaCrosse Tractor Company in Wisconsin. Since some horse farmers were reluctant to make the switch to power farming, this is one of the tricks tractor manufacturers used to try and convince them. The benefit is you could replace the horse, but not have to throw away the horse-drawn equipment. What this was meant for is to get the horse farmer to get into tractors so he could sit on his implement, his plow, his wagon, and just like he would if he were being pulled by horses. This had seven horsepower drawbar, so it could pull the wagon, could pull a 116 inch bottom plow, and could do other field work, and yet he got to sit on the, impl sit on the implement just like if he were using the horse flesh. The LaCrosse Company built six models of tractor, and the rain-driven M's are the hardest to find. This is one of only two known to still exist. It sold for $750 when new, and featured a rockwood pulley friction drive with forward and reverse gears. You slide the engine with the pulley up against two bands. If you push it, let it go forward, it goes against the forward band, you pull it all the way to the back of the clutch bar, it will be friction reverse. Because if you look at it, that one cable wraps around the pulley in front, and that's what allows you to steer, and the same cable then runs through the clutch bar, which then has it with a set of springs, so whether you're forward, neutral, or and to go in reverse, you have to go against all the springs. So it's designed not to go in reverse easily at all. If anything, it'll go forward. And I think that's probably was a safety feature back in 1920. It is designed sort of like a horse. You pull on the right rein, and it will cause it to turn right. You pull on the left rein, it pulls to the left. You pull it straight back, you can pull it into neutral or into reverse. One of the things I thought was interesting is the throttle is up on the engine. So if you decide you want to change your speed, you have to put it in neutral, get off the wagon, go change the speed, then get back off in the wagon, pick up the reins, and put it back in forward. I'm surprised they didn't have some mechanism that you could control that from your implement, but no, you didn't. This is just kind of a fun way to drive it with reins. Most people don't think of a tractor being driven with reins. In fact, the Amishman in Lancaster County that made the reins for me said he had told his friends he was making reins for a tractor, and they all thought he'd maybe been nipping something. <laughs> the Model M is the only line drive to ever take part in the Nebraska Tractor Test Program. The LaCrosse has a two-cylinder horizontal engine with a four-inch by six-inch bore and stroke. That strange-looking part on top is the condensing cone, which helps cool the engine. It's to try to save your coolant. As the water evaporates, it would normally just boil off. This one, there's this cone that looks like a Japanese lantern to me that condenses and lets it drip back down into the, the capacity for where the cooling fluid is kept you know, on to cool the engine. Keith had tractor restoration expert Wendell Kelch oversee the work on the LaCrosse. The goal was to use as many original parts as they could find, but they did allow one modern concession on this classic. He completely restored it. It has an aircraft cable now for the steering cable. When I first got it, the old steel cable that wraps around the pulley in front to steer the front wheels and then also has to go back for your reins to engage the clutch was so stiff from being in one position for years that you really couldn't steer it. It took a lot of force. So Wendell found an aircraft steel care, um, cable, which is very lightweight, which works beautifully in it. And then he did a superb paint job to match what we believe is the correct colors. So uh, to me, it's like I'm back in 1920 driving a, something right out of the showroom. We can't forget that wagon that Keith is sitting on. His Gruber is over 100 years old. Gruber was built in Berks County, Pennsylvania. This one was built in 1912 as a grain box wagon. If you notice, the wagon's original. I bought that. I did have it uh, worked on by the E&E &E Carriage Shop near Burden Hand, Pennsylvania. They're very well known around the world for restoring carriages of royalty and others. 
the wagon had a little twist in the frame and the hubs, a couple of them were not the greatest. And they restored that part mechanically, but didn't do anything for the cosmetics. That is exactly how it was in 1912 when it rolled out of the factory in Berks County, Pennsylvania. Keith's collection focuses on steel wheeled examples of the transition from horsepower to tractor power and from steam power to gasoline. He restores his machines to look just like they would back in the day when a farmer first brought them home. Because I want to have people see this is how the tractor was when the farmer bought it. Um, and sometimes that's not the easiest because over the years carburetors, ignition systems, all that change. And of course people try to upgrade. Well, as a collector, I'd like to get it back to original. But I like the variety. I like to think in 1920, if I was a farmer, what would I want? Would I want a line drive like this? Would I want a Moline Universal? Would I want a higher friction drive? Would I want, you know, a case? What would, they all have different features. They were completely thinking outside the box and they just hadn't designed the box yet. So they had a lot of things on there that really look strange to us today, but that was part of the development of the tractor. During the day, Dr. Coolangle works as a neurosurgeon, specializing in complex spinal disorders and head and spine trauma. On nights and weekends, his focus is on healing his classic tractor fever. Well, it's an incurable disease, but it's kind of fun treating it. I have classic tractor fever. Uh, I've had it since at least 1988, uh, when I got my first Rumley. I pick up tractors. I also collect literature, stick pins, watch fobs, all from the vintage. And to me, that's a lot of the fun is the chase. And it's also fun to educate people about it. Plus, when I come home at night, if I had a really stressful day, um, coming out to the shed, spinning the flywheels of one of them, getting it to pop off, that's just music to my ears. I'm sure my blood pressure just kind of goes down. 